Hey, everybody. Welcome to 21 Laws. Tonight, we are talking about chapters 17 and 18, Law of Priorities and the Law of Sacrifice. So Law of Priorities. They say that you can quickly tell what a person's priorities are by looking at his calendar and his bank statement. So if that is true, what, you don't have to answer this out loud, but what do you think people would say your priorities are? They were just looking at those two things. Um, mine would probably be food if they were just talking about, if they're just looking at those two indicators. So I'm not sure if those are the best indicators, but there's probably something to it. We do spend a lot of money and a lot of time on food. Um, but there's a whole lot of things to do in a single day, right? And sometimes they all feel very important. So how do we know what's the best way to spend our time? What's the most important out of all the important things? Because there's only so many hours in a day. Because some you muted yourself. How did I do that? Okay, anyways, so sometimes the answer is not always clear because everything does feel heavy and like really important. I have had so many conversations with Fallon, my sponsor, about this because we have limited hours in a day. So I would ask her, like, okay, so Fallon. I have this many hours. So what's the most important? Coaching that team member or doing my IPA or watching that training video or working out or having that needed conversation with my teenager or, 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 or. And it just goes on and on and on. So I understand the struggle of prioritizing. It has been one of the biggest struggles in my business. And I'm just being honest, this chapter, probably out of any of the other chapters in the whole book, even this time, even though this is my sixth time reading this chapter, it still hit me right square between the eyes. I felt convicted after reading this chapter, but I do get, which honestly, let me just put a disclaimer. When I said that out loud to the people who were closest to me, they were like, oh, I thought you were really strong in this area. So I was like, well, that if I find that so interesting because inside I feel chaotic. <laughs> I feel like a train wreck. But apparently a lot of times I don't look like it because I get asked a lot, how do I fit it all in? Like people think that I just like have magical powers or something to be able to have six kids and grow a huge business and also maintain a personal life. And so I don't do it perfectly ever. So my answer to the question is, how do I fit it all in? Well, I mean, first of all, intentionally, I do it on purpose. I fit it in on purpose. And then the secondly, not perfectly. That's the answer. Intentionally and never perfectly. But as a mom of six, and also building a business and leading a huge team. I have read multiple books and taken classes on this, guys, on this one topic alone to help me with this because I do have a life. I also want a huge business. I have huge dreams. I have big, hairy, audacious goals and so much responsibility. I have a really, really full life. I drive my kids back and forth to school and activities multiple times a day. And every time I do it, it's 40 minutes round trip, at least 40 minutes. I do it at a minimum of three times, five days a week, okay? My kids are playing sports, so sometimes we have games in the evenings. Not to mention preparing three meals a day for my family of seven plus snacks. And I have grown and married kids or a kid who's grown and married. Um, I also have five level one jewels with big teams plus a level one senior Ruby that I'm trying to develop and she's working toward Emerald. I also serve on the advisory board for Plexus. And I'm also leading a leadership book study every week. And sometimes I just sit there and I wonder how in the heck am I supposed to be skinny? I'm just kidding. I, no, I'm not. I really didn't think that. But all that to say, it can be done, maybe not perfectly, 
but it you can do things well but the disclaimer is you cannot do it all i have learned how to delegate which we're going to talk about a little bit but leaders do have to evaluate their priorities and they have to reevaluate them regularly to make sure that their priorities stay in order so the first thing you need to know about prioritizing is that activity being busy is not necessarily accomplishment or productivity. Activity is not necessarily productivity. Just because you're thinking about plexus all day does not mean that you're actually working plexus all day. So first question, Jules, give me an example of how activity is not necessarily productivity. Sending 843 copy pasted messages. Okay. It's not intentional, not connecting, not, I mean, it's just checking a box. Okay. Intentionally connecting and reaching out, but not specifically mentioning Plexus. Mm. Yeah. Reading, reading something or listening to something, but not actually going and taking action from it. Mm, that's good, Abby. Anything else? I mean, maybe? scrolling Facebook to try to find the next person to message. If you had a system in place, you wouldn't be doing that. Hmm. So tempted to ask questions about the system right now, but it ain't the time or the place. So I'm fighting the urge. <laughs> Anything else about um, activity not necessarily being productivity? I do think scrolling is a huge one. Micromanaging your team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say getting on a coaching call, but yet not saying hard things. Mm. And well, I was thinking talking with your team, but not maybe helping them move forward. Mm. Why Just is chatting. Yep. yep. Or thinking about Plexus, but never talking to anybody about plexus you can think about plexus all day long but unless you're talking to people about plexus so what yep yep and yep. also like the same line as michelle thinking about what you need to improve on but not actually going and take action mm -hmm. yes oh i just thought of a zinger recruiting but not retaining or duplicating mm. Yeah, that's painful. Being reactive instead of proactive. So um, not knowing what's going on with emails from the company or being in team chats all day long, but not actually working on your personal IPA and knowing things on the forefront. I do. I, I like what you just said, Chris, about being reactive. I feel like that's the biggest time waster is being reactive. Like you sit down to work, but you don't even have a plan. You don't know what you need to work on, where to start, what you need to be doing. And so you waste tons of time. And usually it'll look like I'm just going to open messenger and just clear my inbox. And then an hour later, you have done zero income producing activity, right? So that is a huge one being reactive. All right. So leaders never advance to a point where they no longer need to prioritize. So I know that we're all after this whole freedom gig, right? We want freedom, time freedom, financial freedom. But here's the, the rock hard truth, guys. You're never, I don't care how free you are, you're never gonna get to a point in your, in, in your leadership where you don't have to prioritize anymore. The more responsibilities you have, the more important it becomes for you to prioritize. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't have freedom or that you don't have downtime or anything like that, but it does mean you have to be way more intentional about creating it. And that requires you to prioritize. So how do leaders successfully prioritize? Well, they have to always be thinking and planning ahead. Always. I sit down every Sunday night and I feel I have a um, time block and I, I like a, a hourly breakdown, daily hourly breakdown. And I fill in every hour of my week. Well, not every hour, but minimum Monday through Friday. Um, and I do put free time in it. It's not much right now, but I do put it in there because I need white space on my calendar, right? We all do. 
So you have to be thinking and planning ahead. You have to be intentional. You fill in your priorities first. It's kind of like that jar that you put the rocks in and then it looks like the jar is full until you put the, the sand in. And then you, once it's full of sand and rocks, then it looks like there's no more room and then you put water in, right? And so that's kind of how your priorities have to be. When you're planning out your week intentionally, you put the rocks in first. Those are your biggest priorities. And then the other things that are lesser priorities, then you can add those things. And then if you have time, then you can add other things. But you've got to decide what your priorities are. You have to control your day so it's not controlling you. Um, you have to know as a leader when you're prioritizing, you have to know what's the most important by seeing how every single activity that you could be doing with that hour relates to your overall vision for your life or overall goal for your future. And guys, just so you know, prioritizing is hard and it's uncomfortable, sometimes painful because you have to say no to yourself. It's a lot of saying no to the good so you can say yes to the best, but or saying no to what you want in the short term so that you can have what you want in the long term. But leadership does not have anything to do with comfort. It has everything to do with progress, right? I love how Maxwell says that every single year he spends about two weeks in December evaluating his priorities. He said he looks at the previous year's schedule. He looks at his upcoming commitments. He evaluates his family life. He thinks about his goals. And then he just considers like the overall big picture of what he's doing to make sure that the way he's living is actually lining up with what his values and priorities that he said were values and priorities are. And in The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, great book, the author talks about how we should always begin with the end in mind. And he gives this illustration, and I'm going to just share it with you guys because it's so powerful. And, and honestly, it's, um, it shaped me. And it's, it, it, I'll never forget it. But in, in this chapter about begin with the end in mind, he said, imagine you are walking into a, a funeral home. And as you go down between all of the pews, um, you see your friends and family all over the place. And people that you're very close to, all the ones who are closest to you. And you see the casket, so you're making your way up to the front and you get up there and you realize that the person in the casket is you. And you're aware. And you can see and hear everything that everyone is saying. So if this happened five years from right now, let's just consider... And you, these are just questions for self-reflection, but I do think it's important for you to think about what would you want to hear your spouse say? If you were, if you heard him talking about you in a funeral home five years from now, what would you want to hear him or her say? What would you want to hear your children say about you? What would you want to hear your parents say? What would you want to hear your friends say? What would you want to hear your team members say? Or people you work with, maybe your sidelines. What would your upline say? What would you want them to say about your character? What would you want them to say about your accomplishments? What you contributed to the world? What difference you made in their lives? When you stop and consider all of these things, that gives you a very clear picture of what you value the most. So are you living according to your values? Imagine every day, if every day for the next five years, if, if you used every single day to contribute in a meaningful way to this vision that you have for your life as a whole? What would your life look like in five years? What about 20 years? What if this was a daily habit that you cultivated, that you began with the end in mind? You're very clear on what your values are. When your vision 
and, and your priorities, I mean, when your vision is clear and your, your values are very clear, then your priorities are clear. And it's easier for you to make decisions about how you're going to spend your time because you know if it's truly important to you or not, rather than reacting to your circumstances all the time or the demands for your time and attention that will never end, FYI, living reactively leads to burnout. So one thing I want you guys to think about is, is there something in your life that's working so poorly that you know it's going to require a major revision of how you do things? What is it? Don't answer this out loud. But what is it? How is it not working? Why is it not working? Do you need to realign your priorities? If you are ignoring a major alignment problem in your life, it's kind of like lining up a golf shot incorrectly, according to John Maxwell. The farther you hit the ball, the more off course it's just going to be. And the longer you live out of alignment, the greater the chance that you are going to miss achieving your vision. So you need to prioritize. You need to manage yourself, honestly, because you time can't be managed. It's not like an entity. <laughs> yourself is what needs to be managed. How you spend your time is what needs to be managed. But the key here is managing yourself. So you need to manage your life every day to be and to do what really matters the most. And my next question for self-reflection is, as it pertains to your business, if I were an outsider looking in your life, would I say that your business is a priority in your life? Let's talk about what that looks like to prioritize your business. Um, Jules, question. How do you, what, there's so many different things you could be doing as far as plexusing, right? So how do you prioritize activities in your business when there are so many things that you could be doing? Um, I, I try to think about what is the most important, not what feels the most urgent. That was a hard lesson for me to learn. Um, and it's because my personality, I tend to be reactive. So whatever feels the most urgent would be what would get addressed. Um, and, and that is, it's not been the most effective use of my time. Um, and then it goes back to the three R's, you know, I mean, what's going to give me the, the best return. I mean, I, I really like ROI. So I want something that's going to give me a great return. And so knowing that, judging that, it allows me to have freedom to not drag people who aren't willing or who aren't producing, who aren't taking action. I don't have to, I mean, that's on a list of things I could do in my plexus time, but I have the freedom to not do that because the return is not, it's not what it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So if I'm sitting down to work, let's just say, I have two hours this morning and then I have two hours this afternoon when the kids take a nap and then I'm going to work two more hours after they go to bed. How do I prioritize? Like what, how do I know what's the most important thing out of all the things I should be doing? How do I put them in order of importance? Are you asking me this or is this for all the jewels? Yeah, all the jewels. Okay. Go ahead, April. <laughs> you can tell I'm thinking really deeply. Um, I think it goes back to your essentials. What is going to have your paycheck move up? Um, like for me, it's always getting my IPA in, getting a really good post up and some stories, and then typically connecting with my team. Um, and then like the in-between times, of course, retention and adding friends. But I think it's typically making sure I'm paying myself, moving my forward, my business forward, but then also investing in my team. Mm -hmm. Yes. All of that is very good. I agree. Anybody else have anything to add to that? Yeah. So you created a weekly accountability sheet 
mm-hmm. over a year ago. Yeah. And April went over this on our gold mastermind call. And that is like the blueprint for the activities for the week um, and paying yourself paying myself first. And I'll just be real with you that I got into management mode like crazy because as a two with a three wing, I, and I can coach and be with my team all day long because the more I help others, the more I'll reach my own goals, but pay, I really had to learn hard. I had to pay myself first. And so going, even going back to that sheet help guide guides me because I've got to have eight business conversations to write on that sheet. I've got to have welcome calls on that sheet. I've got to have new reach outs on that sheet. And so that allows me, however, I work the best, whether it's all my new contacts on one day or all my follow-ups on another day or splitting it up. It guides me on a week to week basis and keeps me tethered to the very most important actions that are going to move my business forward. Mm -hmm. So good. Yep. I love that. And I think that sheet is called daily action sheet and it is, it's not daily action sheet. No, it's it's the weekly accountability sheet. Weekly. Okay. We've had several. So no, we, we we renamed it daily action or weekly action sheet, but we do have two floating around now. Okay. But they're very similar. I mean, they're probably not much different at all. Um, But basically if you complete everything on that checklist, then you can feel good about what you did in your business for the day. Because sometimes being an entrepreneur can feel kind of like being a college student. You never know if you studied enough, like until after the test is over and they're like, okay, that worked out. Or no, that absolutely was not enough studying. So sometimes being an entrepreneur can feel fuzzy like that, but this sheet, it, it clarifies. It clarifies for you what your priority should be. And it's and it's um, clear because it's concise with like four pillars. There's like, t- you know, there's only four pillars in the business model, but this sheet has activities that you need to do each day under each pillar. So you're not like so focused on recruiting that, oh, I forgot to retain my people or I'm so focused on this or that, that I forgot to share the opportunity and duplicate or whatever. All right. So, um, okay, the Pareto principle. Um, uh, This is so important, guys. If you can grasp this concept, it applies to so many different things in life. The Pareto principle, if you focus your attention on the activities that rank in the top 20% in terms of importance, then you're going to have an 80% return on your effort. And so, I mean, and that's true, like, in, like I said, in a lot of areas of life, the 2080 rule, like, did you know that you wear only about 20% of your clothing 80% of the time? Is that true for y'all? Because it's definitely true for me. And, and it really makes me wonder, like, why do I hang on to the other 80% of my clothing? Um, but in turn, like, if your to-do list has 10 things on it, the, pick the two most important ones and you will have completed 80% of the work. So that's how the Pareto principle works is 20, 20, 80 rule. Um, so if you have 10 level ones, then you give 80% of your time to the top two. Um, and that's going to bring you an 80% return. And that is that that's been proven over and over again, guys. And I'm not saying you don't give any time to the ones who are not in your top 20%, but just know that across the board with top industry earners, when they are asked, how many people have you personally enrolled? It's on average about 100. And when they are asked out of the 100, how many make you the most money? Unanimously, the answer is either two or three out of a hundred. Okay. So just know that the 80, 20 rule is very applicable and not just in business, but also in lots of areas of your life. Okay. So what does that mean? It means you invest in your top 20% and you love the 80%. Doesn't mean you don't help the 80%. Doesn't mean you don't keep the 80% plugged in. It means that an, an investment is like you're giving somebody an hour of your time. You're going and doing events for that person or whatever the case may be. All right. So you invest in your top 20%, love the 80. Here's a tip. 
the things in your business that you dread doing, they don't take as long to do in reality as they do in your mind. So just do it. And here's another tip. It, keep it simple. It's a very, very simple business. Four pillars, y'all. Four. If it is, if this thing starts feeling complex to you, you need to figure out why and just get back to the basics. Four pillars. Okay. So let's talk about evaluating your priorities. That requires you to do three things. Determine what's required of you, what gives you the greatest return, and what brings the greatest reward. So everything that you engage in, every single activity, everything you spend time doing can pretty much go in one of those boxes. Or maybe it doesn't. And if it doesn't, then you probably just need to stop doing it. But what is required of you, that's just things that only you can do. And you cannot delegate that, right? So like, Christina, you can't be delegating Brandon's happy time. <laughs> you, all right, so you, you do have to delegate. And they say that if somebody can do something 80% as well as you can do it, you should try to figure out a way to delegate because you're not superhuman. I delegate a lot of things at this point. I have to. And the first time I led this book study, my kids were like 10 or 10, 12 years old. And I remember telling everybody that I don't do housework because I delegate it between my, all my kids. And guys, I got so many questions about that, that I literally had content to post about kids and chores for a year because people were so interested in how to do that. So I definitely delegate housework. Uh, my kids do a lot of it. I pay somebody to do the rest of it. I do not do laundry because I, that, that's something that someone besides me can do. It's not my highest point of contribution. And I'm not, I do, it has to be done, but I don't have to be the one to do it, okay? And I could list a whole lot of things off that I do. In my business, I even delegate things. I have a virtual assistant. She makes all of my graphics. She runs reports for me. There's all kinds of stuff. She orders things. Like if we do giveaways, somebody's got to mail the gifts to the person. It's got to be done. Do I have to be the per I can spend 20 minutes creating this book study and impact 68 people on this. Or I can spend that same 20 minutes mailing a gift to somebody. Right? So I, I have figured out where all does my time go and what can I delegate? And what can I not? Some things I cannot delegate, only I can do them. Jules, I have a question for you. What do you think keeps people from delegating? Being a perfectionist. Ooh. That was me and feeling like it could never get done even to the 80%. Hmm. But as I started to let it go, like it just took so much weight off my back that it was so worth it. Even if we had to tweak some things and figure out how to get to that 80%. Yes. So basically a mindset of if it's going to be done right, I got to do it myself. Yep. That wow. mindset totally keeps people broke. It keeps people self-employed. And you guys know the difference between being self-employed and being a business owner, right? If self-employed is just an employed person who works for himself, like if it doesn't work, he doesn't get paid. Business owner owns a system. And he has the liberty to go to Hawaii for a week and still get paid if he wants to do that. So this mindset of I can't delegate because nobody can do it as well as I can. It's just going to keep you in bondage. It's going to trap your potential. For me, it was uh, uh, avoiding the slowing down to figure out what to delegate and then taking the time to train the person or should teach the kids or ask for the help. I mean, my husband and I have talked about this a million times. Like there are things that I do that he's willing to do. If I would just slow down and say, Hey, could you help me with this? But instead I just, it's just constant. I'm telling you, it's rea it's, the more I'm learning it is, I tend to live very reactively. So for me, it's just the taking the time to slow down and realize that a, an investment of time here will allow someone else to be able to do this well for the long run. So it's just a, a short-term uh, sacrifice, but it's just being intentional with doing that. You just get in a, a habit of rush, rush, or 
done is better than perfect or whatever. So, Mm -hmm. so how did you overcome that mindset? Um, how did I overcome that mindset? Something had to give and there, I have very, very firm boundaries. So because I have very firm boundaries, I I didn't really have an option. Like it was a, it was a, 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 I was either going to have to fold on my boundaries, which is not an option. Like I'm, I'm not willing to miss my fitness time or whatever. So if that's the case, then whatever else needs to be done in that hour needs to be done, even though I'm not willing to sacrifice my fitness hour. So if I have to have taken the time to hire a housekeeper and show her exactly how particular we are or whatever, then I'll do that because I'm not, I don't know. It was kind of, I don't know. I I had to, I didn't have an option. I, there are things I wasn't willing to give up like my sanity. Um, So it was a necessary evil. Mm -hmm. And then I realized quickly, like, oh, like if I show Carter one time how to make this meal, then now he has that in his tool belt for the future. Like he essentially I've equipped him now. So I started looking at the value of whatever I was teaching the person to do. Like, how will this affect Carter long-term like, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you just ran out of capacity and you were starting to get yeah. Yeah. I mean, I did, I, I, ha- I hadn't run out of capacity, but something I was going to have to give up something that I had decided wasn't give upable. And if so you wanted to grow. Yeah. Yeah. That's I had to, you was, ran out of capacity. Like you got to a point where you're like, if I want to grow, I have to do more of something. And that means I have to do less of something else. Yes. Right. <clears throat> yeah. And I, I realized that not being willing to do that was selfish. Like I, it was causing more pressure or stress to be put on other people in my life um, because I wasn't willing to delegate housework because I didn't want someone in my space. It was essentially putting more pressure on the rest of my household because I still had responsibility. And so my unwillingness to delegate, or if I wasn't willing to delegate delegate suppers, then that just became a point of contention. It still had to be done. Mm-hmm. And so it, I just realized that it was it was causing other problems that it was selfishness really. Mm-hmm. any other thoughts Jules on delegating well I think it's important to say and, and someone was I think it was Brittany Kim said it in the chat I think mom guilt is a huge reason why people don't delegate because we think that we have to be the ones that do everything in our homes and it's just a lie <laughs> It's just a lie. And we can do a whole team call on that. Um, But um, it's just not true. Yeah, I think, well, first of all, Proverbs 31, I mean, she had help. She had to delegate, right? And so she wore a lot of hats. She had several businesses. She had a lot of things going on. So she had to delegate. She had helpers. Um, And then the other thing is I like, I, well, I'm going to get to that. I'm not going to jump ahead of myself, but I'm going to, I'm going to address that. Don't let me forget, but I do plan to address that in a minute. Um, okay. But that's a good point. Mom guilt. I do think sometimes moms think that, oh, this is my responsibility. And so therefore, if I delegate it, I'm a bad mom or I'm lesser of a mom or whatever. And the truth is you're not superhuman. You can't do it all. And nobody should expect that. And I don't even think God expects that. So I think a proper biblical view would it helps ease the mom guilt. Okay. The next thing is when you're evaluating your priority after you determine what's actually required of you and what you can delegate, then you need to determine what gives you the greatest return on your time investment. So you should be getting out of your comfort zone, but you should mostly stay in your strength zone. Do you know what your strengths are? Everybody needs to take the strengths finder test and be self-aware and just know like what your strengths are. If you are working in your strengths, most of the time you're going to work happier and you're going to be more productive. So Jules, what activities would you say brings you the greatest return on your time investment? Probably different for every one of you. I think coaching my team. Yeah. And social media. Social media and coaching your team. Okay. 
training. I think training is, is an area that brings me a great return. Yep. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Vision casting and pouring belief into people when I see their potential. Yeah, definitely a strength for you um, and brings you a great return. Okay, so the next thing with evaluating your priorities is what brings the greatest reward? So this would be like the things you enjoy. So what lights your fire? You need to know that. You need some fire lighters in your life because these are the things that are going to give you energy and keep you passionate. So things you need to think about, write this down so you can think about it this week, but what are some tasks that do not bring you a high return that you could delegate to somebody else? And then what are some tasks that do not bring a high return that you can stop altogether? Everybody probably has at least one of those two. Something you are doing that does not bring you a high return that you could literally stop doing and start doing something else that does bring you a big return. Okay, chapter 18, law of sacrifice. Living by the law of sacrifice means being willing to trade something of value that you possess to gain something that's more valuable that you don't. And I really think that the law of sacrifice goes hand in hand with the law of priorities. Because anytime you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else, right? You're sacrificing that thing. And a leader has to give something up to go up. The life of a leader, it can look super glamorous from the outside because what you might see is what looks like freedom or influence or a lot of money or whatever. But the reality is that leadership requires some sacrifice of you. And also, I think before anybody gets scared by that, it's important to understand that the heart of any good leader is sacrifice. The heart of any good anything really is sacrifice. Think about the heart of a good mother. Sacrifice. Heart of a good wife. Sacrifice. The heart of a good athlete. What all do they have to sacrifice? The heart of a good student. And definitely the heart of an entrepreneur. So it just goes to be expected that the heart of a good leader, it's going to require sacrifice of you. Um, there is no success without sacrifice. There's no such thing. And for everything that you have missed, you gain something else. For everything that you gain, you lose something else. So life is kind of like a series of trades one thing for another. Sometimes you sacrifice what's good so that you can say yes to what is the best. And leaders are often asked to give up and sacrifice more than other people. Do mothers have to give up more than their kids? Absolutely. The heart of leadership is putting others ahead of yourself. Think of the greatest leader who ever walked the earth, Jesus Christ. What did he give up? Sometimes leaders have to give up their rights. Mothers have to give up their rights. Don't you think you have a right to sleep? <laughs> I do, but yet here I am up since 5 a.m. <laughs> there is no success without sacrifice in any area of your life, okay? So whatever it is you want to accomplish, it's going to involve sacrifice. So what that means is if you're successful, somebody else sacrificed so, and you benefited. And if you are the leader making the sacrifice, just know you can be sure that somebody in the future is going to benefit from what you have given. I love the story of Condoleezza Rice in the book, getting up at 4.30 a.m. every day to fit everything in because she had big, huge, audacious goals. And her teacher commented that she didn't even think Condoleezza Rice realized that she was making a sacrifice. In her mind, that was just necessary things to do to reach her goals. 
So question for reflection, are you willing to give up your rights for the sake of people that you lead? Are boundaries important? Yes. But I'm going to be honest with y'all. Some of y'all got too tight of boundaries. Some of y'all have not been willing to sacrifice what it's going to take to get where you want to go in the time that you want to get there. So I want you to, for homework, create two lists on one side, I mean, on one list, write down the things that you are willing to sacrifice. And on the other side, write down the things that you are not willing to sacrifice in order to rank up or advance in your business. And I'm gonna drop you a hint. The one that you're not willing to sacrifice better be a whole lot shorter than the ones that you are willing to sacrifice. You're talking about wanting to make six figures in a short amount of time or earn the amount of money that a brain surgeon makes. I mean, you're going to have to give some things up for a short time period. So in terms of the mom guilt, well, let, before I talk about the mom guilt, let me just say this. Ask yourself this. With each of these things on these lists, if I sacrificed this to get that, would it be worth it? And the that is the thing that you want. What is the thing that you want the most? And look at your list of things and you just ask yourself, if I sacrificed this in order to get that, would it be worth it? If I sacrificed putting my kids in bed on Monday nights and Thursday nights in order to earn six figures that would allow me to put my kids in a private school and take them on a family trip once a year, would it be worth it? For me, the answer was resoundingly yes, because there are benefits to me not putting them to bed in mon on Mondays and Thursdays. The benefits, the biggest one is besides the fact that I do earn well over six figures and we do get multiple trips a year, is the bond with their father. So you are the only one that can answer that for yourself in terms of what's best for your kids and the mom guilt. You can ask yourself this question to bring some clarity. If I sacrificed being the one who cleans the toilets or sweeps the floors or does the homework in order to provide my kids with this, would it be worth it? Christina, did you have something to say? I saw you raising your hand. Yeah, I was just going to, I typed it in the chat. Like, and when you're thinking about these lists, you have to be extremely specific. You can't say, I'm not willing to sacrifice time with my kids. Like that's real vague. What does that mean? What time are you not willing to sacrifice? So an example, like I'm not willing to sacrifice actual sporting events. I did come to a point where I was willing to sacrifice sitting at the soccer field for soccer practice, but I've never been willing to sacrifice actual sporting events or um, school musicals or school performances or anything that was kind of a, um, I don't know the word, but it, what I'm saying is when I was thinking about what I was willing to sacrifice, Britt made me get real specific. Like, okay, what as a family though, what are the non-negotiables? And I got them, I got my hat. I mean, I had to ask each of my kids, like, hey, if, if everything else is on the table, like my list was on the table, everything was negotiable except for a few select things. And I was real specific with that. Um, so be specific. Don't don't be vague. This is a time for you to really, because you have the same 24 hours in a day that everybody else does. And so just get real specific about what time with your kids is a non-negotiable because you're, you're entitled that right. hundred percent. But if you're saying I'm not willing to, I mean, if I said I wasn't willing to sacrifice my time with my kids, well, then that was from four to 9 PM or nine, four to 10 PM every single day. Well, then the reality is I'm not going to grow a six figure business. Like she would have looked at me very nicely and said, I think you're playing small here. I think you could have the best of both worlds, but until you're willing, like you're, it, the reality is you're not going to grow a six figure business if you're unwilling. So be real specific. Don't be vague here. Yeah. Like I, I could tell you like on one hand, what's not, um, what's a non-negotiable and I'm a diamond senior Ruby and I still only have five non-negotiables. Everything else is still on the table. If my team needs me, or if there's something that's a priority, I'm like, I, I'm willing. 
the sacri- my, my my yes is on the table for this business and to help people get where I am, my yes is on the table. So even at this level, I have a very precise and clear list of what's not on the table. And I'm real firm on that. So you can grow a six-figure business and without sacrificing a ton, just know that it's just going to take you longer. If you're not willing to put the time in that it's going to require you to grow quickly, then you can still do it. Just don't expect to do it as fast as you see other people doing it. Because some people catch the vision and they are willing to sacrifice and they're going to do it fast. Okay. So, and, and that's, that's their family, their life. You can't compare your journey to theirs. You just know you're going to have to make a choice to be content with a slower journey than somebody else's. Um, okay. So the law of sacrifice can be seen in pretty much any fitness or nutrition plan or a financial plan. So like you stop eating certain things if you want to lose weight, right? So that's sacrificing. Or in terms of your budget, if you want to take your kids on vacation in the summer, you might have to not take your family out to eat for a month or don't go to the movies for a few months so that you can save those dollars and put it toward what you really want, right? Or you could go diamond that way you can do But the most valuable commodity you have is time. Well, also energy, arguably. But time, you can't make more of it. Money, you can make more of. Time, you can't find a way to make more of that, okay? So, Jules, next question. What is the next level of growth that you must climb and conquer? What should you give up? my comfort zone Mm, that's a good one even jewels have to give up their comfort zones yep my My tendency to be reactive Mm. that's a good one i was saying sleep sleep don't give that up too long now (laughs) need sleep well, it's because I fight the, the laziness. So, you know, I like I do need to practice that discipline of pushing myself rather than leaning into my comfort. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. And isn't that interesting? Because my default is activity. And so I need to make sure I get sleep because when I'm too sleepy, my activity is just sweat and not progress. So that's where discernment comes in because I have to slow down to speed up mm-hmm. in terms of analyzing, thinking, and, and Brit, you know, I'm making progress there, but you know, it, it's so interesting to me that that's what you would say. I'm like, well, I can't give up more of that or I will like die. My business will die and I will die. Yeah. So your tendency would be to fight the, the, uh, you have to fight the urge to to overwork. Yes. And she's saying she would have to give up sleep for the opposite reason. Yes. I find that very interesting that it's the, you know, same exact set of, uh, facts we're looking at, but different perspective and yeah. Interesting. Anything else? Next level of growth that you have to climb and conquer and what should you give up? Okay, I'll be real. I am completely hyper-focused on duplication and mastering duplication, next level of growth, because my goal is six level one jewels. And so what that means giving up is dragging people It means giving up um, everything that is not in line with my goals of casting vision and developing business builders. So it it requires uh, incredible intentionality. And um, I guess to Christina's point about being reactive versus being very intentional about my time, I have to be very focused, like um, Uh, lack of focus. Like I've got to be incredibly focused because this is the very thing that's going to move me and my team where I want to go. 
Yes, that's so good, Michelle. And I know that that is hard for you to say because your belief in people is like way up here. So for you to decide, I know who I'm looking for. I know what my focus is. That means I have to be willing to let go of um, people who I feel like I'm dragging. I mean, I know that is, that's painful for you. Christina, when you say I'm going to give up being reactive, does that feel painful? Yeah, it's not the reactivity that feels painful. It is the, um, it is the amount of work that my, that I require a lot of work to think proactively. I'm not real analytical. Um, I, I think I get by a lot on humor and all of that. And so people assume I have this level of just critical thinking and I, and, and I do, but I'm not, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an activator. I'm a problem solver and it's real hard to solve problems until problems have arise. So I don't think a lot, I don't do a, a good enough job thinking proactively, prioritizing the thinking ahead. And I, that is what I will change this year. My word this year is uncomfortable because that is very uncomfortable for me. I would rather put out all the fires than figure out how to prevent the fires from starting. Like that's just, I can see a fire. I understand how to put it out. I feel capable of putting it out. Um, it feels less risky. The fire is already there. I might as well be the, like I can be the hero over and over again mm -hmm. and being proactive. Um, you're never really the hero. Like the problems that like you're trying to avoid the problems. And so the person is the hero. And so it's just a different, it's just a different um, role that I get to play, but I'm really excited about it, but it is uncomfortable because it requires a lot of intentionality. I mean, it required, so for instance, today I wanted, I'm practicing this and I'm very honest with my team about what I'm learning. And so what would have been an hour coaching call ended up being two hours of an investment because I spent 30 minutes ahead of time thinking proactively about this person. And just, I mean, even like, it feels silly, but like, just like asking for wisdom, like, okay, God, like, give me wisdom was the right thing to do was so, like, let me hear the right things. And then let me have right motives, whatever. And then the call and then 30 minutes of thinking and then thinking about my thinking while articulating it to you. Like, Hey, is my thinking even right? Like, here's what I'm thinking based off of what you told me to think about my thinking. <laughs> um, so yeah, it does feel uncomfortable thinking Y'all, listen, if you saw my time block, you would laugh so hard. My time block on Monday for two hours says, think about your thinking. And I'm like, thank God I told Brittany what it said. Cause she's like, that's a terrible plan. Abort mission. You don't need to think about your thinking for that long. Instead, <laughs> why don't you just think about your thinking for 20 minutes after each call? Like, let's do that. And I'm like, oh, thank God. I don't know what I was going to do for two hours. So yeah, it does feel uncomfortable. I'm, but I'm willing. That's the thing. If, if it doesn't feel uncomfortable, it ain't a sacrifice, y'all. It yeah. ain't a sacrifice. Yeah. If you can easily give up Netflix, you're not sacrificing. You just not being lazy. It better be uncomfortable if you're going to consider it a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It better be. And so, yeah, this does feel uncomfortable and it feels like a sacrifice. But I'm telling you, my team will win because I'm willing to sacrifice this. Ooh. And that's worth it to me. My team will win. And they will in a year say, Hey, you know what? Some things changed this year. Thanks for that sacrifice. They won't realize it was a sacrifice. They'll just think it was a like second nature for me. But all the all the while behind the scenes, I'm trying to figure out what can I give up to help them go up. Mm -hmm. They they will realize the sacrifice. They will at some point. Sometimes it takes a while. It's kind of like raising kids. You know what I've found. That is after they leave the house is when they value your input the most. <laughs> like after they grown, they come back and tell all the other kids, you know what? You should listen to mom and dad. They write. So anyways, it's kind of like that. They might not realize it's a sacrifice in that moment, but they do, they will realize it. And they'll be very thankful because you will have impacted them with your sacrifice. All right, guys. So another piece of homework. I want you to think about what you're thinking about. I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't, don't everybody go think about what you're thinking. About. That homework was just specific for Christina only. Y'all, I have to invent homework for Christina. Did y'all know that? <laughs> she gets her own. I'm like, wait a minute. I have to think, you want me to think about what I'm thinking about and then tell you what my thoughts are about what I thought? 
<laughs> she said, Brittany, I am going to be sitting there like Winnie the Pooh talking about tink, tink, tink. <laughs> anyway, all right, that's neither here nor there. Um, so this week, I want you to think about one thing that if you were to give it up, you believe that it would move you forward. And this is not limited to leadership or business, guys. It could be an investment in your health. Maybe you give up a certain food that you love, or maybe you're giving up an hour of sleep so you can get up early to exercise or like whatever. I mean, it doesn't have to be business focused, but think about your goals um, in each area of your life. And then what's one thing you can give up in order to move closer to it and then do it. Don't just think about it, get into action over it, do it every day. And then think about where you're going to be six months from now as a result of your willingness to make that sacrifice. All right. Um, so real quick, this is next week is our last week of this book study. We'll be wrapping up 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. And I hope you guys have gotten a lot of value out of it. But I want to go ahead and let you guys know about what our next book study is, which is, I should stop the recording Drum roll right to like leave people hanging. Everybody's going to be like, what is it? No, you seriously. Then you'll get a bunch of messages. You'll get all the messages. <laughs> it's Atomic Habits by James Clear. And um, a lot, I've not, well, I listened to this book. It was an abridged version, but even just the abridged version several years ago changed my life. I loved it. And so Christina's holding it. Christina, say something so they can see. Y'all listen, when Brittany tried to break it with me two years ago, it was like a really dramatic thing, not like a friend's thing when it wasn't really a breakup. This was actually a breakup. And so I decided to prove her wrong and read a book because she said that would change my business. And so I read the book and then I went Sapphire and Diamond. But besides that, this was one of the books I started with and phenomenal yeah so and michelle picked it up this week i had just ordered the hard copy this week it came monday and monday i got a message from michelle and she's like i just started reading this book it's called atomic habits and you're not gonna believe what i learned i'm so excited da, 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 da. and i'm like i literally just ordered that and we had no idea that each other had ordered it or reading it christina's already read it emily's already read it yeah she would tell you it's a huge um, piece of the puzzle of how she went emerald after six years I mean it's a great book and so we're excited about it go ahead and order the book I'm going to also post about it in the team page but I just want to give you guys a heads up so we'll finish up 21 laws next week so don't drop the ball on that finish strong there's three chapters left and we'll knock them all out in one hour next week and then the following week we'll start atomic habits okay good night bye